The great and powerful Oz knows why all of you have come here this evening. Step forward, Ethel Scheffner Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Katie Preer. Miss Preer teaches fifth grade math and science at Ethel Scheffner Elementary School and has seven years of experience. Like the Scarecrow, she is loving and caring, but has a tendency to be clumsy. Despite her occasional clumsiness, she is a brave soul who will not shy away from facing any challenge that comes her way. Indeed, her bravery is especially admirable when we consider her fear of bears. Though these creatures may appear cuddly and cute, she knows that they are quite dangerous. Step forward, Satellite Center Teacher of the Year, Rit Growl. Mr. Growl teaches digital media to 11th and 12th graders at the Satellite Center and has 18 years of experience. This brave and experienced individual has faced life's challenges head on, much like the cowardly lion. Although he fears encountering a bear in the wild, he refuses to let this fear prevent him from exploring and discovering all the wonders of our beloved Land of Oz. Step forward, New Sarpy Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Nyla Smith. Miss Smith teaches first grade English language arts and math at New Sarpy Elementary School and has nine years of experience. Like our beloved Dorothy, she possesses a remarkable strength of character, exhibiting unwavering perseverance and resilience. Although she fears the cunning camouflage of tigers, she never lets her fear stand in the way of her indomitable spirit. Step forward, Lakewood Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Krista Hollis. Miss Hollis teaches third grade math and science at Lakewood Elementary School and has 12 years of experience. She shares the same spirit as the Scarecrow, ever seeking wisdom and answers to the mysteries of this land. Out of lions, tigers, and bears, oh my, she dreads the mighty bear, for it is the only beast of the three she may actually encounter in reality. Step forward, R.J. Vial Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Logan DeSherry. Miss DeSherry is a special education teacher who teaches third graders at R.J. Vial Elementary School and has five years of experience. She is reminiscent of Dorothy in the way she faces obstacles that come her way with grit and determination. And yet the fear of bears sends her heart racing, for their deceivingly cute appearance masks their true size and temperament. Step forward, Norco Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Jessica Wagner. Miss Wagner teaches pre-kindergarten at Norco Elementary School and has 15 years of experience. She is an extraordinary individual who exudes the magical qualities of Glinda. She strives to create a wondrous learning environment for her students. Though the image of lions once stirred a fear within her, she has now transformed that fear into admiration for their majestic presence and commanding authority. Step forward, Hanville High School Teacher of the Year, Elizabeth Perino. 
Miss Perino teaches 10th through 12th grade math at Hanville High School and has 19 years of experience. Like the Yellow Brick Road, she directs students on a path to accomplish their goals. As an LSU graduate and Hanville teacher, she is definitely not intimidated by tigers and stands confidently ready to lead her students down the yellow brick road of success. Step forward, R.K. Smith Middle School Teacher of the Year, Waco Bickham. Mr. Bickham teaches eighth grade math at R.K. Smith Middle School and has six and a half years of experience. Like the Scarecrow, he is honest and considerate of others while striving to improve himself. He is a fan of the LSU Tigers and the Southeastern Lions, but bears scare him. However, when he met a bear on his journey to Oz, he stood tall, knowing that he is prepared to handle any challenge that comes his way. Step forward, Luling Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Sierra Scott. Miss Scott teaches kindergarten English language arts and math at Luling Elementary School and has 13 years of experience. Like Dorothy, she is confident and outspoken. She stands up for what she believes in and has a deep appreciation of family and home. She is hoping to avoid bears on the yellow brick road with their mighty roar and claws. However, she will stand tall in the face of a bear or any other obstacles with confidence, knowing she has the power within to triumph over any adversity. Step forward, Alamans Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Amy Vedros. Ms. Vedros is a literacy interventionist at Alamund's Elementary School and has 19 years of experience. She embodies the same bold spirit as Dorothy, who led her companions to the Emerald City with unwavering courage and determination. Although afraid of tigers due to their solitary nature, she fearlessly leads her students with encouragement and support past the tigers and obstacles along the path of life. Step forward, Harry Hurst Middle School Teacher of the Year, Chelsea Kleber. Miss Kleber teaches sixth grade English language arts at Harry Hurst Middle School and has six years of experience. With a heart as big as the Tin Man's, she holds the same value of having a compassionate and kind nature. It is no wonder that at the age of six, she donned the silver suit for a dance recital, feeling a sense of connection to the character. On her journey to Oz, she conquered her fear of lions and now appreciates their strength and power. Step forward. Destrahan High School Teacher of the Year, Macy LaFleur. Miss LaFleur teaches ninth and 10th grade math at Destrahan High School and has nine years of experience. Like Dorothy and as a Destrahan High alumna, she knows in her heart there's truly no place like home. An LSU Tiger herself, and as she considers bears to be cute, not surprisingly, she was most afraid of the lion when confronted with lions, tigers, and bears this evening. Step forward, St. Rose Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Joseph Schick. 
Mr. Schick teaches physical education and health at St. Rose Elementary School and has 35 years of experience. Much like the mysterious wizard, he has an innate desire to lend a helping hand by giving items to others. Intimidated by lions, tigers, and bears in the wild, he hopes to not encounter a tiger tonight. Because although he is a PE teacher, he knows he definitely cannot outrun the giant paws of the tiger. Step forward, Albert Kamen Middle School Teacher of the Year, Candice Seminole. Miss Seminole teaches eighth grade Louisiana history at Albert Kamen Middle School and has eight years of experience. Like Glinda, she embodies her compassion in guiding nature toward others. She lives by the philosophy that mistakes are proof that you are trying. While bears scare her due to their unpredictable nature, she sees lions and tigers as large, lovable, and predictable cats. Step forward, Mimosa Park Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Melissa Gallagher. Miss Gallagher teaches first grade at Mimosa Park Elementary School and has 22 years of experience. Much like Glenda, she possesses a strong sense of empathy and a desire to guide and help others. Although intimidated by their fierce strength and power, her compassionate nature would compel her to help any lion in need that she may encounter on the yellow brick road. Step forward, J.B. Martin Middle School Teacher of the Year, Annette Blanchard. Miss Blanchard teaches instrumental and general music at J.B. Martin Middle School and has 26 years of experience. Like Glinda, she has a nurturing nature and enjoys taking care of her munchkins. As the great and powerful Oz, I know she is not frightened by lions, tigers, or bears, but by snakes. Snakes? Why did it have to be snakes? Wait, that's the wrong movie! As all of our guests of honor are now seated, it's time to begin our ceremony. You may now speak. Kimberly Jones, St. Charles Parish Public Schools 2023 New Teacher of the Year and Mistress of Ceremonies, and inform everyone here tonight whether you are a good witch or a bad witch. Why, I'm not a witch at all, Your Excellency. Welcome, welcome to the wonderful land of Oz. We're thrilled to have you on this enchanting journey down the yellow brick road to the grand 2022-2023 St. Charles Parish Public Schools Teachers of the Year Banquet in the Emerald City. And who better to lead us in our invocation and Pledge of Allegiance than our very own Student of the Year for the Satellite Center's Educators Rising Program, Adeline Saxton. So please gather around and stand as we begin this beautiful evening in the wondrous Emerald City. Good evening. My name is Addie Saxon and thank you for inviting me to lead the prayer this evening. If you may choose to do so, please bow your head in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather tonight to celebrate the Teacher of the Year, we are reminded of the invaluable role that teachers play in shaping the lives of their students. Through your tireless dedication and commitment to education, you have not only imparted knowledge, but also inspired countless young minds to achieve their dreams and aspirations. 
May you continue to be a shining beacon of hope and source of inspiration for the generations to come. May your passion for teaching never wane, and may your unwavering love for your students continue to ignite the flames of curiosity and wonder in their hearts. May you always find joy in the journey of education, and may the rewards of your hard work be abundant. May you be blessed with strength, strength, patience, and wisdom to continue making a positive impact in the lives of your students and the communities you serve. As we honor this Teacher of the Year tonight, let us also pay tribute to all the teachers who tirelessly work day in, day out to make a difference in the lives of their students. You are the unsung heroes who shape the future of our world. Blessings to all of you, and thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Adeline. School Board President Art Oakland will now give the welcome. Thank you, Adeline. As the wizard himself proclaimed, a heart is not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved by others. Tonight we gather to honor and recognize the very best teachers of our land, whose hearts are overflowing with love and dedication toward their students. I am thrilled to introduce my fellow school board members and esteemed guests in attendance. Please stand when your name is called. Current Vice President from District 1, Mr. Ellis Alexander. <laughs> District 2, Mr. Ray Gregson. <laughs> District 4, Ms. Karen Boudreau. <laughs> District 6, Ms. Becky Weber. And District 8, Mr. Al Suffren. I'd also like to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Ken Ortling. <laughs> Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources and Administrative Services, Ms. Teresa Weber. <laughs> Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum, Instruction, and Assessment, Ms. Erin Grignier. And representing our sponsor tonight, Shell Norco, Senior Corporate Relations Advisor, Ms. Rochelle Tushore. <laughs> On behalf of the school board, I'd like to congratulate all 16 of our Teachers of the Year. Thank you and enjoy your evening. Thank you, Mr. Oquin. As you may have noticed in your program, the dinner portion of our evening will now commence. Please enjoy your meal and we will resume with the program after dinner is served. I hope everyone enjoyed the culinary delights of Oz as we are now going to resume this evening's program. However, please feel free to continue enjoying your dishes at your leisure. The Teachers of the Year program is a national program designed to honor outstanding teachers from each state. On the local level, we meet annually to honor all of our Teachers of the Year and announce an elementary, middle, and high school teacher as a St. Charles Parish Teachers of the Year. All Teachers of the Year must complete an application with writing samples and be interviewed by a selection committee. I ask that each selection committee member in attendance stands as I call his or her name and that the audience holds its applause until after all are introduced. This year's selection committee members include Community representatives, Michael McMillan of the Louis Armstrong New Orleans International Airport, Tommy Scott of the Louisiana Workforce Commission, and, and dynamic international speaker, Marlena Valentine. 
2022 Teachers of the Year, Lauren Hemel, Emily McNamara, and Kimberly Peltier. School system employees, Maggie Boos, Kay Casanova, Tamika Green, Christina Lott, Brian Parasuti, and Courtney Young. Please join me in a round of applause, thanking them for giving their time to select this year's winners. <laughs> Assistant Superintendent Teresa Weber will provide some fun facts about each of our guests of honor as they come forward to receive their engraved logo from School Board President Art Oakwin and Superintendent Ken Ortling. But first, please direct your attention to the screen to see our outstanding Teachers of the Year in action. My biggest fear when I first started teaching was probably just worrying that I wasn't going to be enough for the students. You know, worrying that you're not going to get through to some of those harder kids and be successful with all of the different things you're having to manage. You, you know, eventually get to that point where you are starting to feel confident and you are reaching those kids even if you don't feel like it every day. It's kind of the little small victories along the way. As you get into it, you realize I'm here to build relationships with these kids. I'm here to build them up, make them realize that they are capable and they are loved and they are worthy. So when my students think back to being in my classroom, the most important thing that I want them to feel is just the memory of belonging. Especially in fifth grade, there's a lot of insecurities. There's kids trying to figure out who they are and what they're doing moving forward. I want my students to feel confident and able to move forward with you know, that feeling that they are able to do whatever they set their mind to and that I was there to help them along the way to achieve that. Growing up, I had a very involved mom and dad that were there to you know, make sure that I had everything that I need, that they were there for my sports activities and dance recitals and different things. I started realizing that there's a lot of students that come from broken homes that don't have a consistent adult pouring encouragement and love into them. And that's really what made me want to become a teacher, was being that if there's kids that don't have this in their personal lives, then I can provide that for them in a school setting. I've been there since the satellites are open back in 2005, and it's just been both an honor and a pleasure for me to be there. It's kind of cool to see the growth and, and kind of look back as a teacher on how I've grown since those first years to where I am now. So my, my biggest fear when I first started teaching was that uh, because I didn't come from a teaching background, I was always kind of looking over my shoulder like I was afraid that somebody was going to come tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, we made a mistake. Like, you're the wrong person for this job. We need to get you out of here. But the coolest thing about it was after maybe the first week, just being around the kids, you kind of start feeding off the energy. So there's been a lot of moments in my teaching career that, that have kind of stood out to me and where I know that I was making an impact on, on team members' lives. A few years ago, I got a package in the mail from California. So I opened it up and inside of it was a, a game package for a, a PlayStation game. And inside of it, there was a note from one of my former team members and he said that it, it had always been a goal of his to work for um, a AAA rated gaming company and, and work on a, a really big name game and his wish had finally come true and that I don't know it kind of hit me real hard because it was a goal of this kid for his whole life to, to be able to do this and this is just a, a young man who was a kid in Destrahan. That's stuff that we talk about is, is you know if we say hey look I, I just want to be successful and I guess my definition of success is being able to support yourself, being able to do something that you love, um, finding something that you're passionate about and then just treating other people nice. You know, I just hope wherever they go, they, they find something that they're, that they're doing that they like and that they're making maybe an impact on other people's lives. So to have the opportunity to represent New SARP Elementary means a lot to me. It is a part of my journey. It is a part of my purpose and I pray that uh, my experience will be uh, rewarding or an example for someone else coming along. 
I uh, just always wanted to make sure that I was intentional about what I did. Um, and I've always allowed myself to learn and to grow. I hope that my students remember that they can do whatever they set their minds and their hearts to do. I hope they remember all the accomplishments they achieved while in my classroom. Whether it was a challenge coming in and then gaining and earning mastery at the end, or whether it was a challenge throughout the school year, just having that mindset and that understanding that I may not know it now or I may not know it yet, but with a positive mindset, they will continue to work towards their goals, whether it's in the next grade or years down the road, but it will be the foundation or a small part of their futures, whether it's academically, socially. Anytime a student grasps a skill that they've struggled with is always that shiny moment for me. It's, it's just seeing the students succeed. Those are the moments that I hold dear. Those are the moments that mean the most to me. My students being successful. When I first started teaching, I felt like I didn't know anything, you know. Um, it was kind of like playing a game, like, okay, I'm here, I'm the adult, I'm supposed to know things. Um, but I've grown as I have my own kids and my own kids have gone through and, and, and been in elementary school. Um, when my students look back, I hope that they know that I was their cheerleader, um, that I wanted them to be successful, that they know that I cared about them, that I was gonna push them, that they were allowed to make mistakes in my classroom and you know I wasn't gonna judge them, that I was there to help them. One moment that stood out to me and made an impact was years ago I taught fourth grade and I had a student that lost her mother. And just seeing her um, come to school, you know, we, we cried together, I hugged her, um, just seeing how she grew. And then she moved away and um, years later she contacted me on Facebook and was like, Miss Hollis, I don't know if you remember me, but you made such a big impact on my life and just the fact that, you know, she remembered me, I think, you know, that made me realize that what I do makes a difference and um, that I can impact children. Um, my hope for the future of my students is that they are successful in whatever they choose to do. Uh, and I just hope that they believe in themselves as much as I believed in them, um, and they're successful at whatever they do. What it means for me to represent RJBL is it is the most exciting moment that I've had at RJ. I looked around and every child was so ecstatic. They were screaming my name. And so just to be able to represent RJVL, I feel so loved. I am a special education teacher, so I have a lot of students with a lot of high needs. And I just wanted to make sure that every child, every day, I did my best. And so I feel like I'm doing that now, and I just want to continue on helping each student meet their needs. When my students look back on all their years of education, I hope that they understand their worth. Every child is capable of having a great career, a great future. It's just about showing them what they're good at. I really think that my mom inspires me to teach. My mother is a teacher here in the parish. How I see her interact with her children, I wanted to feel that pride, that comfort that you get when you help a child and you're leading them down their career path. A moment that stood out to me in my teaching career would have to be probably last year I had a student, he sat there and he just didn't have that spark. And so I needed to make sure that he understood that he was good at things. So I pulled him aside and once I showed him what he was good at and that he had knowledge and that he was great at things, he wanted to do more. And so I, I sat back and I realized I should do this with every student. So setting goals with students has to be what motivates me the most. Our school is such a nurturing and supportive environment and the fact that I have all of the supportive faculty and students and everyone behind me makes me feel really good. My biggest fear when I first started teaching was that you never knew what was gonna happen, so the unexpected. So you quickly learn to expect the unexpected. I am a different teacher now than when I first started by being more flexible. 
You learn to just roll with the punches. You learn that something isn't gonna work in the morning with the morning lesson that you taught your first class. You quickly have to reflect, change, and figure out ways of how to make it better for the second class. If you're not reaching someone, you know to just be flexible and go. When my students look back, I hope that they remember and take with them that I cared about them, that I was their number one fan, that any time that they had a problem, they could come to me. My first grade teacher and my sixth grade teacher inspired me to teach. Uh, my first grade teacher ended up rolling up with me um, to third grade, so I had her twice. So she just really built the foundation and nurtured all of her students and really cared for them. And my sixth grade teacher was very transparent and real and coached us. And I just, those qualities I really loved and it just made me want to become a teacher. One moment that stuck out to me was when I was with our school improvement team for our Christmas dinner and I ran into a former student that happened to be our server. She went on to tell the entire table how much I inspired her to become a teacher and how much I meant to her and how much I supported her. And it was just cool to hear. Our Teacher of the Year from Ethel Scheffner Elementary became a teacher because she believes that every child deserves to have an adult who believes in them and will cons consistently show up for them. However, if not a teacher, she would have worked in the wedding industry. She loves event planning and enjoys photography and cooking. During her free time, Ms. Preer enjoys trying new restaurants with her husband. She is happily married to her husband, Greg, she maintains a close relationship with her mother, her four siblings, her nieces, and nephew. Ethel Scheffner Elementary School's Teacher of the Year, Katie Preer. Please come forward. Our Teacher of the Year from the Satellite Center became a teacher because he wanted to give back to the young people who live in St. Charles Parish, and he wanted to expose them to things he was not exposed to in school. However, if not a teacher, he would have continued working as a graphic designer. Mr. Grau enjoys exercising outdoors in his free time. He has been married for eight years to his spouse, Robin, who is also a teacher. He has, he has a four-year-old son named Riley and a 15-year-old dog named Louie, who he claims is studying to get his learner's permit. <laughs> Satellite Center's Teacher of the Year, Rick Grau. Our Teacher of the Year from New Sarpy Elementary School became a teacher because she believes it is part of her purpose in life. However, if not a teacher, she would have been a journalist. In her spare time, Ms. Smith enjoys traveling and spending time with her family and her best friend. She has a 30-year-old son named Kyle David, along with her parents Raymond and Audis Smith, four brothers and a wonderful nephew. New Sarpy Elementary School's Teacher of the Year, Nyla Smith. Our Teacher of the Year from Lakewood Elementary School became a teacher because she loves helping young people and loved school when she was young. However, she would have become a physical therapist if she wasn't a teacher. When not at school, Ms. Hollis enjoys reading and taking naps when she isn't at the ball field watching her kids play ball or cheering. 
She has been married to her husband, Marcus, for 22 years, and together they have three children. Her oldest child, Leah, is a senior at Destrehan High School, where she is a cheerleader. Her second child, Cameron, is in ninth grade and on the baseball team. And her youngest, Blake, is in third grade at Scheffner. Lakewood Elementary School's Teacher of the Year, Krista Hollis. Our Teacher of the Year from R.J. Vial Elementary School became a teacher because she wanted to make a difference for students just like her mom did. However, if she hadn't chosen a career as a teacher, she would have been a dental assistant or a vet. During her time off, she enjoys spending time with her family and friends and taking her dog on walks. In Mr. Cherry's family, there is a strong sense of support and a love for spending time together. Her mother is a talented art teacher in the district and her stepfather works for a local plant. Her older brother has recently embarked on his first year of college and her younger sister currently attends Destrehan High School. RJ Vial Elementary School's Teacher of the Year, Logan DeCherry. Our Teacher of the Year from Narco Elementary School has always wanted to be a teacher and was inspired by her first and sixth grade teachers. In her spare time, Ms. Wagner enjoys spending time with family and friends. She always likes to run and be outside. She has been married to her husband, Jason, for a decade, and together they have two daughters, fourth grade Ella, who is a dancer, and first grade Allie, who is exploring tumbling. Norco Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Jessica Wagner. Now let's redirect our attention to the screen to meet more of our Teachers of the Year. To represent Hanville High School as Teacher of the Year means so very much to me. I bleed a little purple and gold. I have been there for 18 years. From a little child, I wanted to be a teacher. I got my first little teaching set, my first piece of chalk, and right away realized that this was a cheap piece of chalk and that my teachers had very expensive chalk and I couldn't wait to be a teacher. I'm proud of myself that I am doing what I set out as a child that I was going to do and that I still love doing it and still want to remain in the classroom teaching math. When my students look back at their time in my class, I hope they take away the home feeling, the safe feeling, and the fact that they can conquer anything. And at the same time, I'm always an email away. I've had students come back and ask me questions like, can you please help me You know, in this trig class? One moment for me in particular is I just started doing ACT math intervention. And so I've been pulling students one-on-one -on -one to help tutor them in math, to help them bring up their ACT score. And this particular student wanted this score so he could get into college. And he got it and he was yelling it down the hallway. Like, I got my score, I got my score. Now, granted, he did a lot of work on his own. It wasn't just me, but that I just realized that all of my help and my tutoring and my working with him so hard actually helped him and now he's going to college and now he gets to do what he wants to do. What inspires me to teach is the fact that I, as a single person, can make an impact on so many people every single day. 
it's of those tiny moments that come together that make it a big moment for me. It may be inconsequential to start, you may not think anything of it, but looking back, it's like, wow, that kid hadn't smiled all year and they smiled at me this morning when they walked by. That's a huge win for me. It's a huge win for the kid. And so there's really not one moment I can pinpoint because my job is so fulfilling. And every single day I try to bring the best version of myself for the kids because they need that. And being able to inspire them one day hopefully inspires them later on in the future to do good for our community because these kids are going to be our future. When students look back on their time in middle school and having me, Wade Kubik, from as a teacher, I hope they remember the fun that we had and that, you know, math's important, but you are important as well. And that I hope they realized that I cared about them and that they looked forward to coming to my class every day when they had me. And every single day I tried my best to do the best for the kids and I think it's paid off. I mean, now kids have secret handshakes with me. I, I know pretty much every kid in the building, sixth grade to eighth grade. It's just, I've really embraced the culture of the kids and, and they've embraced who I am as a person and it's really made those fears I had going in and made them not fears, but almost strengths because I, I got to know the kids on a deeper level and it's just, hey, you're my students. No, you're my students, but I know you beyond who you are as a student. I know who you are as a person and what your goals are and where you want to be in the future. I think seeing the teachers that I had, the joy, the happiness, the fulfillment that they got out of teaching, it instilled in me the love of teaching. Ms. Vicks made me become Maya Angelou, so she put her whole heart and soul into everything she did, and the children knew not just by what she did, but what she said to them and where they saw her at. Like, it was nothing for us to see Ms. Vicks at Raceland Lower, but then in the afternoon, we would see her Thunderbird riding down the street, and we knew she loved us in the school, but she also loved us outside of the school. I think we have this idea that to be successful, we always have to be perfect, and we always have to be right. So I think when I first started, I was more concerned with what I was teaching versus the who I was teaching. And I think it needs to be a balance of both. Because I always say, I want my child to receive the teaching that I give to my kids. So back then, if I was worried about being perfect, and now I'm worried about building relationships and providing meaningful experiences, I just know that every time I plan, every time I collaborate, that's what's on my mind, because I know that's what I would want my child to have in return. I love all of my kids. Like, I love them from August to May, and I always tell them, boys, and girls, Miss Scott loves you. Miss Scott cares for you. So every year, what I do is I read the story called Our Class is a Family, and it actually becomes our class motto. So whether we are celebrating each other, whether we are crying together, whether there's a challenge and we have to include some problem solving, I always go back to my kids and I say, well, hey, if he can do it, you can do it. If he has it, you can share it because our class is a family. Because ultimately, I know the children that I'm teaching today, that is our future. My biggest fear when I first started teaching is that I wasn't gonna truly make the impact on the students that they needed in order to become successful. I feel like way back when I was focused on making everything so just fun and focusing on making sure I was teaching everything that needed to be taught. But now I feel like I have such a focus on the student, understanding their strengths and challenges and what they love and putting that into my lesson so that it could be more engaging for them. I, I hope when looking back that they can remember that I motivated them, that they can do anything in life if they set their mind to it. And that motivation and encouragement can go a long way. That their passion, whatever they see, is what they wanna do, that they can do it no matter what. Something that happened quite recently has made a, a really big impact is a student came up to me um, and said, I want to come come with you today. I was like, are you coming with me today? And they were excited. And when they left, they said they didn't want to leave because they said, when I'm with you, all I feel is success. I feel like I can do anything when, when I'm with you. Knowing that I made that impact on a child that they don't want to leave because you truly want them to feel success. Because when you feel success, you can do anything in life. I'm definitely a different teacher now by having more determination and more of a creativity to bring to the classroom because when I first started it was kind of a survival mode like what, what are we gonna do you know like I'm gonna do what my partner teacher does and my principal says I have to do and then now I've kind of grown and said okay we're gonna do this but let's make it a little bit more fun which they then love and they they love all of that silly funky stuff that I, I make them do <laughs> I love to see them 
you know, um, stepping in front of the class and presenting why they wanted their main character, which was one from third grade, um, what and why they should win the class Emmy. The one person that inspired me to teach was my mom because she was a sixth grade um, teacher and she did teach all between as well. Sh showing a light on education that I didn't see before. Um, one moment that impacted my education career was a student who had like a kind of a rough home life where I broke it down with her and I said like one day you could be a nurse because you are patient caring and um, after that she was like what, what do you mean because you are so smart and you have qualities that I don't have that nobody else has. She changed in my class but she also changed her demeanor around and so she then opened up to me later and was like Nobody ever told me that I could go to college or what I could be when I grow up and I was just want her to finish her essay and I just want her to do well. So those things like from then on it kind of hit me like I can really you know motivate kids but also like change the society around me to be better. Our Teacher of the Year from Hornville High School has always wanted to be a teacher. Her favorite memories of, are of her playing school and getting teacher supplies to make it more real. However, if not a teacher, she would have been a dentist. During the summer, Ms. Perino enjoys going to the beach and supporting her daughters who swim. She is happily married to Paul and the mother of two wonderful daughters, Ashley and Sophia. And by the way, it's it's Sophia's birthday today. <laughs> Happy birthday, Sophia. Additionally, their family includes a dog named Augie and two guinea pigs named Ruby and David. Hornville High School's Teacher of the Year, Elizabeth Perino. Our Teacher of the Year from R.K. Smith Middle School became a teacher to make a positive impact on others. If not a teacher, however, he would have become a sports broadcaster. During the summer, Mr. Bickham loves to travel overseas. He and his wife got engaged in Copenhagen, Denmark, and he honeymooned in Barcelona, Spain. They look forward to bringing their son to Greece this summer. He is married to Kate, a school psychologist, and they recently welcomed their first child, Cal, in October. Additionally, he has a dog, Atticus, who they rescued four years ago. R.K. Smith Middle School Teacher of the Year, Waco Bickham. Our Teacher of the Year from Luling Elementary School always wanted to work with children. If not a teacher, she would still be working in the school system, but as a guidance counselor. Ms. Scott enjoys shopping, trying new restaurants, and attending concerts in her spare time, especially the annual Essence Music Festival in New Orleans. Along with her high school sweetheart, Jai, she is a proud parent of her six-year-old son, Landon. Luling Elementary School's Teacher of the Year, Sierra Scott. Our Teacher of the Year from Alamans Elementary School became a teacher because she wanted to make a lasting impact on her students and colleagues and can't imagine not being a teacher. In her spare time, Ms. Vedros loves to spend quality time with her family, going out to eat at new restaurants, and reading a good book. She has been happily married for 12 years and is blessed with two amazing children, 10-year-old Landon and 8-year-old Lily Jo. 
Alamans Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Amy Vedros. Teaching gave our Teacher of the Year from Harry Hurst Middle School a challenge to look forward to and a plethora of opportunities to meet and connect with people. However, if not a teacher, she would be a nurse. When not with students, Ms. Kleber loves cooking and enjoying athletic events. During the summer, she likes to travel and go fishing. Her mother retired as a teacher after 28 years and her father works as a cancer center pharmacist. She has two younger brothers who are both employed in the field of engineering and is excited to get married in June, followed by starting a new family and moving to St. Charles Parish. Harry Hurst Middle School's Teacher of the Year, Chelsea Kleber. And now, let's meet the rest of our Teachers of the Year. To represent Destrian as Teacher of the Year is really exciting because I'm a Destrian alumni, class of 2010, and I've known I've wanted to be a teacher since I was little. I actually fell in love with teaching when I was a peer tutor in our after school tutoring program at Destrian. So some of the rooms that I'm um, teaching in, the room I'm teaching in now, I had a class in. So it's really special to get such an honor at a place that means so much to me. The people who inspired me to teach were all the teachers I had through the St. Charles Parish Public School System. Obviously, a lot of my high school teachers, I steal ideas from them, um, and I think back to how I felt in their class and try to make my students feel that way. Also, elementary teachers I had, I still keep in touch with, and they give me great advice. Um, I do these positive postcards to just kind of students that are putting forth effort. It may not be the student that always gets the spotlight shown on them. Just say, hey, I see you're doing your work. I see you're improving. Good job. And I wrote one to a student that really struggled in my class. Fast forward to the August she started college and she Facebook messaged me and she was like, I was really nervous before class this morning, but I knew I could do it because I have the postcard you sent me on the mirror and I knew you were proud of me. When my students look back, I hope they know I really cared about them and that I believed in them. I teach geometry and it's definitely not everybody's favorite subject, um, but just showing growth along the way and knowing that I thought they could do it, I was proud of them. And the biggest thing is that they're proud of themselves and that they take ownership of their learning. I just really love being at St. Rose. I think it's a great school. We have some great teachers over there. Uh, I think uh, one of the things about teaching, and I've been doing it for a long time, is it's the students that you teach and the people that you work with. The kids inspire me to teach because um, I enjoy teaching the kids and I just want to, you know, they just, to see that smile on their face, to see them when they, you know, I have them from K to five now. So when they start at K in kindergarten, they always so tall, they only could do so many things. And to see them get, when they're fifth graders, they grow, they get old, I establish a relationship with them for five years. And, I, and then of course, I follow them into junior high and high school. So that's what inspires me to keep teaching. I want them to see new things, uh, to learn new things, um, and tie it all together. It's one thing about physical education, it's different than any academic subject. You're taking, you're educating them 
but they're using their bodies when you educate them. I want them to um, learn um, some of the activities that we do are lifelong activities. So I want them to take those activities and do them uh, as an adult. It could be golf, it could be tennis, things that they didn't know nothing about and we introduced them and they liked them and they became lifelong activities for them. What it's like for me to represent Abercrombie Middle School as Teacher of the Year is it's a very exciting idea. I didn't think I'd cry when I'd find out, but I did. Just seeing my kids with my students, I could probably cry right now, uh, was very awesome for me. So I'm very proud to be there, Teacher of the Year. My mother inspires me to teach. She is an administrator in another district, and I find myself striving to be just like her. Um, striving to do things like she did, how she looked at things, being that person that majority of the students are going to like, that struggle for everybody else. Um, and so she's been my inspiration for all of it. What I hope my students carry on and take away from having me as a teacher um, is that I cared about them. Um, and it wasn't just caring about their grade, it was caring about them as a whole, making sure they were okay, making sure that their grades and their other subjects were okay. When I first started teaching, I feel like I was a kid with the kids. And um, so I feel like I just I have gained more experience and knowledge on what they accept, what they like, just as a whole of how do I handle them. And I think becoming a mother really helped that idea because uh, I, I started thinking of it in perspective of what I what would I want from my child because that's what I'm going to have every child in my classroom. I think when I go back to sporting events and I see the students I've had in the past and they're excited to give me a hug, I know I'm making a difference. Because I had a student, I challenged him a ton, um, but this year he gave me his jersey for his senior um, idea and so right then and there I knew that I challenged him. I gave him a hard task sometimes, but it really paid off. For me to represent my school as Teacher of the Year, um, it's a very rewarding feeling. Um, I've been there for 18 years. I am a different teacher now from when I first started teaching um, because when I first started, of course, I didn't have any children. And I think that you think through a different lens when you, when you have kids of your own and it makes you a better teacher. Um, I'm different because I have learned so much throughout all of my years. Um, had a lot of professional development and have just become a lot more comfortable. So when my students look back as me as their first grade teacher, um, I would like them to know how much they were loved as first graders. Um, I want them to know that they have developed a love for learning. They can do whatever they want in life and looking back and just knowing that they were successful is, is really rewarding and something that I want them to feel for the rest of their life. I am inspired to teach um, by teachers that I had in the past. Um, going through school myself, I always uh, you know, looked up to my teachers and always admired what they did. The one moment that stands out to me in my teaching career is just the moment of success. Like when I see that in my students and um, see that they realize that they were successful, just stands out to me every day. The moment that they get it and that light bulb goes off is just really what gets me all the time. Things that I want my students to take back from me is that part of band is failure. There's no other thing besides the arts that we always strive for perfection. It's not attainable. It isn't. There's always something you, you can fix, you can change, you can make better. And I want them to know that, that that happens in real life. It's okay. Failure's always an option. It's how we grow from it that makes a difference. Um, I had a really special mom. Um, and she always wanted me to be the best teacher I could be, to be the best person I could be. And the other one that inspires me is my little girl. Um, especially now, because she's going into music, and I get to see it again, like the excitement again, through the eyes of somebody that's so excited about going into the teaching profession. And that love, and it inspires me to want to be even better. One moment that impacted my teaching career, I got my very first sweepstakes at State. 
one of my students raised his hand, a little bassoon player, and he said, Miss B, we're doing this for you. And at that moment, it hit me. They think this is about me. And I went, no, 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 no. You do this for you. You don't need to do it for me. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And this is what I love, and this is what I love to do. And I couldn't imagine not doing what I'm doing. Our Teacher of the Year from Destrehan High School became a teacher because of the St. Charles Parish teachers who positively influenced her. If not a teacher, she would love to be a pastry chef. Ms. LaFleur enjoys reading, listening to true crime podcasts, baking, cooking, and watching TV shows and movies with her husband. She has been married to her best friend, Jeremy, for nearly two years. They share their home with a lovable but ever-shedding brindle dog named Pato, whose world is going to be rocked when they add her baby sister, Claire Catherine, to their family this summer. Destrehan High School's Teacher of the Year, Macy LaFleur. Our Teacher of the Year from St. Rose Elementary School became a teacher because he wanted to work with and develop kids. If not a teacher, he would have been a physical therapist helping people recovery from their injuries. Mr. Schick loves music and likes to attend numerous concerts in his spare time. He also enjoys playing with his two grandkids and giving back to high school sports by refereeing. He has been happily married for more than 35 years and has three daughters, 31-year-old Rebecca, 29-year-old Gabby, and 17-year-old Madison. St. Rose Elementary School's Teacher of the Year, Joseph Schick. Our Teacher of the Year from Albert Cammon Middle School became a teacher to help children learn how to be successful. If not a teacher, she would have been a photographer who captures nature and historical landmarks. In her spare time, Ms. Simino crafts on the side and has a small business making earrings, shirts, and door hangers, and also manages her family property. Doesn't sound like a lot of spare time. She loves to fish and spends as much time in sportsman's paradise as she can. The eldest of three siblings, she has been married for a decade to her high school sweetheart, and they have two beautiful children, ages nine and six, in addition to their dogs and cats. Albert Cammon Middle School's Teacher of the Year, Candace Semino. Our Teacher of the Year from Amosa Park Elementary School became a teacher because she loves working with children and hopes to make a positive impact on their lives. If she had not pursued a career in education, she would have become a nurse. During each summer vacation, Ms. Gallagher takes family trips to the beach and likes to visit new cities. She also works on projects around her house and spends time with her children. She has been married to her husband, Dennis, for 22 years. Together they have three children, 19-year-old Brendan, 15-year-old Christopher, and 14-year-old Brian. Mimosa Park Elementary School's Teacher of the Year, Melissa Gallagher.
Our Teacher of the Year from J.B. Martin Middle School has always wanted to be a teacher. However, if she had to pick another career, she, sh she says she would have chosen to be a rocket. Ms. Blanchard loves to go to Disney World in the summer. She also likes to hike, not surprisingly dance, and hang out with her friends. She is the oldest among her four siblings and has been married for 24 years. They have a daughter who is currently attending Northwestern and following in her mother's footsteps by pursuing instrumental music. J.B. Martin Middle School's Teacher of the Year, Annette Blanchard. We have now come to the most exciting moment of the evening, but I think we should have some more dessert. What do y'all think? <laughs> the naming of the 22-23 St. Charles Parish Teachers of the Year. Each winning teacher will receive an engraved crystal vase and a check for $1,000. Once again, please come forward as your name is called. The 2022, 2023, St. Charles Parish Elementary Teacher of the Year is Amy Vedros. <laughs> of Alamans Elementary School. The 2022-2023 St. Charles Parish Middle School Teacher of the Year is Annette Blanchard. <laughs> and she represents J.B. Martin Middle School. The 2022-2023 St. Charles Parish High School Teacher of the Year is Macy LaFleur of Destrehan High School. I would like to invite the wizard himself, Superintendent Dr. Ken Orling, to the podium to make some remarks. Although my wife thinks I'm a wizard, I'm not. First of all, uh, good evening. And of course, you know, when you attend events like this, before I actually get to the actual prepared script, I know everybody's like, of course. Uh, there are certain things that, that truly inspire you. And as I saw many of you watching the videos and watching our phenomenal teachers, I saw tears in your eyes, right? I know I did for many of the stories um, that our teachers gave and, and unfolded on the screens. And when I see that and I see the joy that they have in teaching, and I'm getting emotional now thinking about it, and I think of the support of the schools to those teachers, and I think of the support of the board and staff across this entire school system. 
And then I see the impact that they make each and every day to each child that they come across. And I look at the Wizard of Oz theme, right? And I think there's no place like home. And I think, Ms. Scott, you referenced it in yours, is it's not what you teach, it's, it's who you teach, right? Each and every one of these teachers being recognized tonight, and each teacher across the school system, each principal across the school system, each board member, makes each one of our classrooms feel like home. Because there's no place like home. And no child will ever learn unless they feel as though they belong at home. Right? We all experienced Ida the last couple of years, so we all know what home is when it's, it's missing. So I want to first of all, and I'll say plenty of thank yous, but thank you for treating each one of our kids and creating that environment as if it's their home. Because your ability to do that and impact each and every child in their homes is what allows them to grow. So thank you for that. Each and every one of you deserve a tremendous round of applause and appreciation for what you do each day. So good evening. Tonight we're gathered here to honor our esteemed teachers who have guided their students through life's journeys while also inspiring us to become the best version of ourselves, just like the characters in The Wizard of Oz. As we all know, the yellow brick road led Dorothy and her friends to the wonderful land of Oz. And in much the same way, teachers lead their students down paths of knowledge and enlightenment while teaching them how to navigate the twists and turns of life. Our teachers have bestowed upon their students the gift of knowledge. Like the scarecrow, they help them gain the wisdom to use it wisely. Teachers are the heart, the courage, and brains behind our success as a school system. And so tonight, we have honor and will continue to honor these beloved teachers and educators, the real life versions of our favorite Oz characters. We thank you for your tireless dedication and unwavering commitment to excellence in helping these young individuals grow and succeed. May you continue to inspire and encourage generations of learners and your impact for years to come. Thank you for excelling in the fantastical realm of education and paving the way for your students to navigate through the challenges of learning, which we all know they experience in life. Thank you for, for providing exhilarating, diverse, inspiring, and unforgettable experiences, as many will reference in the videos this afternoon, for your students. Thank you for the many daily sacrifices you have made to always place your students' future first. And thank you for guiding us, our school system, our community, and our families down the yellow brick road of excellence. I'd be remiss without also saying thank you to some of the people who made it possible for us to visit the fabulous Emerald City this evening. Um, please hold your applause until everybody's been recognized. Uh, Shell Norco for their generous donation for making this event possible and sponsoring tonight's event. Our mistress of ceremony, Ms. Kimberly Jones. Satellite Center team member, Adeline Saxton, for leading the pledge, invocation, and will lead the benediction. Talented music teacher, Mike Townsend, he was the fabulous wizard, for providing the voice for the Teachers of the, of the Year grand entrance. Satellite Center team members and facilitators from Advanced TV Broadcasting, Interactive Media, and Technical Theater for production assistance. And that's often overlooked. Y'all, this is put on by our students. So the skills that we're teaching them, we're preparing them for their future now, and they help facilitate this event. And of course, our Public Information Department. Director Regina McMillan, coordinators Alexis Cannon and Mason Dauphin, Senior Secretary Stacey DeJean, and receptionist Rose Brignac. Please join me in thanking all the people who made tonight such a special night and worked so hard to make it special and a memorable event.
And in conclusion, I must say the past couple of years have been quite a journey. And I know many of us are still recovering from the wicked witch called Ida. But let me tell you, we are very resilient people in this Emerald City called St. Charles Parish Public Schools. You, like Courageous Lions, each and every one of you, have faced challenges with bravery and creativity. Like the clever scarecrow, you have unquenchable desire to continue learning. And like the Tin Man, your passion for your work and compassion for those around you make you the heartbeat of our school system. As we reach the end of the Yellow Big Road, that's a, that's a song, isn't it? Somebody, I know, come on, yeah, I know you know the song, right? Uh, each of our teachers of the year will be given a small token of our appreciation. It's a very, I hate to say doormat, because that doesn't sound like it's nice, <laughs> but it's a very fancy, nice doormat, okay? <laughs> to remind you, okay, it can be used at your home, your personal home, or your home away from home. To remind them that this evening's festivities we're not just a passing dream, and truly, there's no place like home. Congratulations again to our wonderful teachers who make us proud. Thank you, Superintendent. Before each of you leave the Emerald City this evening, whether by broom or by bubble, I ask you to direct your attention to the screen for one last tribute. Are you sure this footage is good? I feel like, this, like I'm just talking. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, so re tell me the question again. Second. Can I start over? I feel like I'm rambling really yeah. weirdly. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a different teacher now than from when I first started teaching. Was, I mean, I was a lot younger when I, <laughs> I guess age-wise, I, I was a lot younger when I first started teaching. Um, I lost the word, you gotta cut that part off, so. And when I was younger, I was very, very thin. Very, 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 very thin. Um, I looked like one of the kids. I got stopped in the hallway. Hey, you. Oh, and I turned around, oh, never mind. Um, is, I don't know. <laughs> Can I start that one? Um, stop. I don't know. Wait. <laughs> State the question again. Oh, okay, okay. My bad. Okay. So the question was to represent Hearst, right? Okay, say it again. All right. No, I'll say it. Um, oh, they stumped at me here. Uh, I want to start over. <laughs> Gee whiz. When, like, Frank Harding calls in my room for a kid, will be like, Miss Loveler, and the kids all die laughing. And I'm like, you, I, like, I feel like, the candle from like Beauty and the Beast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and you are gonna edit all of this, right? <laughs> okay. What I hope they car they take away and carry on from me. Having me as a teacher is you mind if I have to start that again? no problem. <laughs> I don't know where to go with this. Why you didn't stop me? <laughs> I used to steal my teacher's chalk and bring it home because it was good chalk. And my mom would buy me like this cheap chalk, and I was like, Mom. It's not good. It doesn't write on my chalk road well. Like I would, like I'd steal like the little broken pieces. I was like, how sad is this? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <sighs> can, I, can I get a little long on this story? Okay. So you're saying everything up until now hasn't been long? <laughs> well, I don't know. Am I, am I, I, I feel like I'm kind of short. You're about the average. Okay, good. Thank, thank you, Mace. Um, Scratch that. I started rambling and lost my train of thought. <laughs> Can you say it again? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm struggling. <laughs> Sorry. I messed it up. I felt like I was going so strong. One moment, I think. Wait, can you restate? I can't. Sorry. <laughs> wait, say the question one more time. I am not answering that question well. Let me just breathe. So is my ear getting red? Like, I feel it getting red. <laughs> okay. I lost it. And see. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> 
And with that, it is time for us to click our heels to be transported back home. On behalf of the St. Charles Parish School Board and its employees, I would like to thank everyone for joining us. I ask that everyone remain seated for the benediction led by Adeline Saxton. Following the benediction, please allow all 16 of our Teachers of the Year to come forward to the podium for photos. Teachers, please bring your awards with you to the front for photos immediately after the benediction. Adeline? Please bow your head if you may choose to do so. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for allowing everyone to be here safe and healthy this evening and for allowing us to celebrate these essential teachers. Lord, I ask you to allow these teachers to keep their passion for education through the hardships to come and to allow them to change the lives of many more. I ask that you send children of the future generations to the hands of these wonderful educators and give them the same passion for education that lives inside of us all. Please watch over this wonderful parish that we call home. Lastly, I ask that everyone have a, has a safe trip home this evening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs> 